Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, and today we're making some beautiful hand-painted crystals. Now this is all part of a much bigger course, I've got lots of playlists about hand-painted materials, and do check out the beginner's guide, which I'll put a link in the description and a card in the corner, because I may rush a few aspects, because I assume you know them. I'll try not to rush too much, but if you do get caught out, then have a look at those. Also, if you get really stuck, you can go to the Discord server, or type in the comments below, I do read all the comments and I'll get back to you. So here are our crystals, very simple to make. I will make one now. So let's shift right click here, shift A to add mesh cube. I'll grab that in the Z1 so it sits above the floor and I'll just hide the floor for a moment. I'll press H on that and hide it. Select my cube again into edit mode with tab and let's delete the bottom face. So delete faces. And then I'm going to do a loop cut around the middle. So control R is the command for loop cut and double click to set it in the middle there. Now I'm going to scale that in the X axis, so S then X, so pull it out there, and I'm going to grab this one in the Z axis, G then Z. So that's not scaling this time. Now let's select these top two faces, so I press three to go into face mode, select those two and grab in the Z axis and pull them upwards, making a really big crystal this time. Control R and do a loop cut around the middle there, bring it up and scale it out. So you can see the idea of a crystal there, fairly straightforward. The last thing I do is go into proportional edit, that button there, one on my keyboard and select a vertices, G to grab, and I can wheel to make this circle of influence bigger or smaller. And now I can move these things around by pressing G to grab. I'll select all the ones at the bottom, Alt left click for that and scale them in. And now we've got a huge great crystal. And I can adapt the shape just by pressing G and moving these things around. So I think that's an okay looking crystal. I think I'll scale it down though, so let's scale it down and scale it in the x-axis. It looks a bit fat at the moment. Scale it in the y as well and just adapt the shape slightly. So that's probably more of a preference thing, but I think that's a nice crystal. So the next thing to do is mark our seams so we can unwrap it. The really easy way of unwrapping is select all press U and Smart UV Project. But it's such a simple shape, we may as well unwrap it properly. This is quite easy. So two for edge mode, Alt left click to select that edge loop around there and Control E, Mark Seams. So that way we've marked our own seams and if we ever want to paint in a 2D program, we can easily paint one side and then the other. So let's go to our UV editing panel here and check whether this is going to work. Select all with A, U to unwrap, Click Unwrap, and Object has non-uniform scale. I forgot about that. So back into Object Mode, Control A, and set the scale. Because at the moment, it's got non-uniform scale, like here. But as soon as I press Control A, Scale, it all sets it to 1. Now when I go to Edit Mode, U to Unwrap, and Unwrap, it makes full use of the UV space. Let's just turn the island margins up a touch. So something like 0 0.6, 0 0.006 usually works quite well, let's zoom in. And it's just that space in between there it gives us a bit of room so they don't overlap and we don't see the seams. I think in fact I could move these islands around. Not that you have to do this, but just nice and easy to rotate that one and rotate that one. And then they'll fit in a lot better. And they've got a bit more gap. But you don't have to do that, it shouldn't make any difference. I just like to be nice and neat and tidy. Okay, so let's go to the texture paint panel, just up the top here. Let's bring down our shader editor. I go into the corner at the top here where my cursor changes, click and drag and pull it down to there. Then I can go up to the top here and go to my shader editor. Press N to get rid of that panel and we need a new material for our crystals here. You can see that I've shaded these ones already. So first of all, a new shader and we'll call this crystal two and it's got no material. So we need to add a new material you can do that here or you can do it over here as well. Let's do it as intended and add a texture in here. Base color. Now 1024 by 1024 is absolutely fine and quite big in fact, you can go smaller than this. Let's have the base color at some sort of bluey color, somewhere around there. We don't need an alpha channel because there's no transparency in this. And now we can press okay. So we've got crystal two base color. Now we can't see it down here. Let's just open that up. So click on the down arrow there. I've already got one in from my previous one, but crystal two base color is the one we want. And there we go. Now we are all set up for painting. Let's just check and paint and it's over here and on here. Perfect stuff. If that doesn't work, you may have your normals around the wrong way 
or you may not have your textures in here. So we'll start with our texture brush. Let's find a nice blue somewhere around there. So let's go across to the blues, down a touch. It's nice and dark. And let's create a new color palette and add that color to it with that little plus sign there. Now let's paint on this. Now it's all a bit shiny and it's difficult to see whilst it's in this sort of shading mode. So if I press Control, Shift and left click on my base color, I can now see without any influence of the shading what's going on. To do that, you must have the Node Wrangler installed. So go to Preferences, Add-ons and make sure the Node Wrangler is ticked. And at that point, it's all down to my texturing, which is what we want. And that's what will happen in game. And that's what will happen if you put this on smooth shading. Let's get the smudge brush now and smudge some of these errors out. I'm going to put up the strength of the smudge brush and just sort of blend together these colors. And don't be afraid at this stage of just smudging it together. Don't worry too much. Okay, so that's fine as a starting point. Let's go back to the principal BSDF. So control shift left click. So now with the principal BSDF selected, I can see the edges. That way I can go into my draw brush, turn on screen, nice and light and towards the middle. I'll add that to my palette and I can draw some lines along the edges. Not like that though, because that's poor. Bring the strength down a little bit, about 0.4 should be fine, and just highlight each of the edges that you can see that are there. So nice and simple, nothing particularly complicated. You could even do this with the straight line tool, which is in the brush strokes. I suppose I'll show you that. So there's a line tool here, and you click and drag. It's even better, isn't it really? I was just being lazy earlier. I'll isolate this so the other crystal doesn't get in the way. So that's forward slash on my numpad. And I think I've got them all. So let's go back to our crystal texture and control shift left click. And you can see what we've got there. Still needs a bit of work. So first of all, the multiply brush with a darker blue somewhere around there. Let's add that to the palette. Maybe go across the blues a bit more, a bit more saturated when you're doing darker things. F to make my brush big. And of course I've still got the line on, so I'll just go to the stroke method and change it back to spacebar. And I'm just going to fill in the bottom areas a bit more to make them a bit darker. Shouldn't really go over the edge like that, but hopefully that won't make too much difference. So I want to see. Now with the multiply brush still selected, I'm going to bring down the strength and paint these bits in. So I'm going on each of these squares. And what I'm doing is I'm changing the shading so the light should come from the top, be bright on this bit, which I'll do in a second, slightly less bright, and then even less bright as it hits these, because these are all straight and flat, so they should be fairly uniform, but I can sort of smudge them together a bit in a second. So same with this side, those three. And it's kind of starting to work already. Let's get the screen brush. Oh, I haven't done those lines there, so I'll just quickly do that. Use that light brush again. One down there, one down there. Nice and big, low strength, across the top there, across the top there. I might do it twice in fact, because I feel like it needs to be a bit lighter. And then I'll do it once down here. Just undo that, there's a slight glitch there. Just brushing lightly now. So the light is hitting the top, and these bits are going to be a touch brighter than the bottom bit. Okay, so very simple crystal at the moment. Let's add a bit of details in, so sort of roughness on the crystal. We could change our brush for this. Let's put a brush mask in. So new mask, cross to the textures, and let's add a new texture for our brush. Make sure you're on the brush. New texture, and let's change it to clouds. Let's see what that looks like. Back to my brush settings, and I'm still on screen, so let's just choose a slightly different color and change this to mix. And that's not doing anything. Let's just quickly check. So for some reason, the texture didn't come through. Let's click on that. There it is. Let's use that. There we go. So let's turn that strength down, adding a bit of variation and texture to our crystal. Could change the colors a tiny bit just to add a bit of variation again to the colors. I'm sort of going near the edges as if they've been brushed by different things, weather and so forth. You can see issues here, so I can get the smudge brush out a bit later. 
sort those out if I need to. Occasionally you can have happy accidents and they can kind of work for you like little cuts and things like that in here. Okay, so we've got a bit of texture on our crystal now. I feel like these lines are far too much, so I might go in and use the multiply, low strength, dark brush, just paint over a little bit and then I can add into the lines a bit later on with the screen brush. So I'm just painting it a bit darker in places. And I'm gonna get rid of my texture mask now. So just the cross down here, and that will get rid of that and we're back to the normal brush. So let's go to the screen like I was saying earlier. Up the detail a bit and add a bit more to these areas. I've still got the dark brush on, so light brush. Oh, I've still got the texture on, it feels like it. Oh, I've still got a texture on, so I must have added the texture to the texture rather than the texture mask. So I had a, both the texture and the texture mask, so let's get rid of that as well. And there we go, now we've got a straight line for our brush. I'll leave my mistakes in, in case you make the same. So I'm highlighting these edges a bit more, making them a bit clearer. Feels fairly strong actually, so I'll just minimise that touch. I'm going to put my radius on pressure sensitivity, then I can press lightly and get smaller strokes. I think that will help me. So you can see I'm just painting these corners a little bit. I'm going to use the smudge brush here because it's a bit of a mess. No happy accidents there. Back onto my screen brush, highlighting these edges. Okay, so it's kind of working at the moment, but we certainly need a bit more work. So, with the screen brush, very low, nice and big this time. I'm going to just sort of give it a bit of a glow. Let's choose a bit more blue though. Sort of coming from the middle, that's what I'm thinking. So it's got a glow and a transparency is what I'm thinking. I'm making it quite rough though, can you see? I'm squiggling around with my brush a bit, giving it that sort of roughness. And hopefully a bit of a glow to the middle. Do the same this side. Right, and I'll go really light now, and I'm just going to, with a bigger brush, go across the middle a bit, as if there's a bit of a glow coming from the crystal. I'm going to work on these edges a touch, because they look so uniform and so sharp. I think using the line brush didn't help really, actually. I prefer to do everything by hand, and I think we're sort of getting there with these curves a bit more now. That's the problem with using the line brush. It can create such sort of hard surfaces and very sort of digital looking. So if you want organic things, which is generally what's going on with hand painted, even with most objects you get sort of organic wear anyway, so I do prefer doing it by hand. Now it's got a sort of more fun hand painted feel certainly. Still not quite got the glow, so back to the screen brush, a little bit brighter. Nice and big again. Got a bit of purpley tinge there, so I'll give it a bit more green. Want a bit more glow coming from these. And then small brush. Might put a bit of texture on this time, so let's go back to the texture mask this time. Choose the cloud. In fact, I don't like the tiled, I prefer random. It can sort of go over itself a bit more then. Bit more colour variation. See so if it's sort of reflecting a bit of coloured light. Okay, it's kind of fun at the moment, it's got lots of sort of glow to it. Now I still feel like these need to be more solid colours. So screen again, I'll go more into the middle now. And without my texture mask, let's just make sure my texture hasn't got one as well. And let's paint on there. That's great, other side as well. If I keep my brush pressed, it doesn't keep adding. That's under the options, you've got accumulate, and I've not got it ticked, so it doesn't keep adding. So I can fill in that square and know that it's not going to keep adding it to it. So if I bring the strength down now, it will only go to point 0.1. In fact, I'm gonna go slightly lower than that for this one, and just paint around, keep my pen pressed against the surface, and I know that it's going to only be at point 0.1. And then darker for these ones, I think. Still at point one though. Might need some more on these. Now we might want some nicks in there and cuts, so let's go to the multiply brush. 
bit higher with the strength, about 0.2-ish, and then come across with sort of cut and dent across there, and then much smaller right in the indent. And remember where the light's coming from, so if you think about it, nice straight line there, but it's going to be more shaded underneath here and lighter here. So let's get the screen brush and do a little highlight on the end there. And see if it's catching the light just on the corner there, but it's more so underneath here. Let's change my colour slightly. So that's a bigger highlight there. And zoom out, see how that looks. That's fine. So I'll add a few more of those around the place. That's great. And I'm just going to work on these highlights a touch more. So with a very fine brush this time, as if they're really sharp. It's just that real detailed area now. And you only do this right at the end. Make it seem really sharp. Obviously it depends how sharp you want your crystal, of course. I might turn the strength up, actually, rather than going over and over. And brush size up a touch. It's okay if your lines aren't completely straight. Adds that sort of organic feel to it. Okay, so it's working reasonably well. I'm just going to come down here, but lightly pressing now. So they look sharp, but they shouldn't overtake these lines up here. That doesn't make sense because they're lower down, therefore they don't catch the light in the same way, and they're in the shadow slightly. Just going to add a bit of variation on the colour. So a bigger brush. And use the texture mask again. Might change the modes every now and again to a bit of multiply as well. Coming up from the bottom there. A few more minor details. Another sort of detail you can add with the multiply brush. Let's bring the colour a bit more neutral. You can add a sort of dent, a bit more strength. Turn my texture mask off. You can add so there's a slight dent in there, probably a bit too much there actually. And then highlight the edges around it. And I'm just going to smudge the middle a bit so it doesn't have a line through it. There we go. So a slight dent. Need to work a little bit on that though. A bit more multiply underneath there. There we go, tiny dent. Let's have another little scar down here. And there we go, make sure you do save the textures. Now I can easily duplicate this. Let's go back to layout mode and to look dev. Duplicate this, shift D, rotate around the Z and move it around. And I can keep copying and pasting this one and just move it around, rotate it, scale it, and you come up with a sort of crystal mesh. Now my other ones are much more vibrant, so I might try and change the vibrancy. Have a bit of fun with it, so texture painting. Let's try some different modes like vivid color or vivid light, I should say. Have some fun with this, change the color a bit more. Looks quite interesting. Bit of multiply in there at the base again. And I'm painting just one, but of course that's affecting all of them because they share the same texture space. I can even adapt the colours slightly in places as if they're reflecting off surfaces. And just generally have some fun playing with the blending modes and learning a few things as I go. Okay, so there we go. Some crystals took me quite a while and a lot of experimentation, but it was really good fun. I hope you learned something from this with the different tools that I'm using and just have a bit of fun with it when you have a go at these yourselves. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.